This is uh, this session is reimagining Flutter automation with Appium's Flutter integration driver by Sudarshan Selvaraj. So, without further delay, over to you, Sudarshan Selvaraj. Thank you, Shrikant. So, uh, let me quickly share my screen. A quick intro about myself, right? So, uh, I'm Sudarshan, and I've been working as a principal software engineer in Boomi. And I totally have around like a 10 years of experience in a QA space. So majority contributing to like automation or front end and API. So I also contribute to some cool open source projects that revolves around uh, Selenium and uh, APM. So today I'm here to present uh, a session on topic uh, reimagining Flutter automation with uh, Flutter integration driver. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's quickly see like a uh, what things are we gonna cover for the today's session, right? So, uh, so majority of the like a session will be focused on like how are we gonna automate our uh, Flutter apps using Flutter integration driver and APM. But we will also uh, touch base on a few things related to like what Flutter is, what uh, different automation strategies do Flutter support, some of its problem statement, and then see how Flutter integration integration driver can come and rescue and uh, solve all those problems, right? So as you can say, like we'll be having a five minute Q&A session at the end, and let's use that for any question and answers, and uh, we will discuss it further. So okay. So like, uh, let's quickly check. You know, like, uh, how many of them in this chat knows like uh, what Flutter is and uh, have using uh, Flutter for some time and uh, know something about Flutter, right? So yes, maybe like a uh, drop a note in chat and like a uh, quickly design so that we know like uh, what things to cover and what not. Okay, looks like uh, everyone are pretty new to a uh, Flutter ecosystem thing. Cool, okay. So what Flutter is like, you know, like uh, so even before uh, going and looking into like how we gonna automate it, we should know like uh, what's the background and why we need Flutter in the first place. So Flutter is like a open source UI toolkit developed by Google. So and what it is used for is like, uh, it is used to build like a cross-platform application with a single code base. So that's the core agenda, right? So given that like uh, mobile apps are going to be the, the future, so companies wanted to invest less time in building an application that supports multiple platforms. And Flutter is kind of the, like a market lead now. So all uh, you have to do is like uh, write a code once and uh, compile it and Flutter will give you executables on different platforms for mobile, for iOS, Android, for web, for desktops, whatnot. So that's kind of a lifesaver, right? So, and uh, it, it is built using Dart language. So all majority of your code that is gonna be written in the Dart, then compile it. So the Flutter will compile it for the, based on the each executable platform and you just need to run it. In certain sections, when you need to like, uh, like introduce some core native related uh, items, then we will be like uh, switching or using the, like, uh, the platform specific codes, but majority of the code will be written in the Dart. And uh, as I iterated before, right? So they are the kind of uh, leader in the hybrid app development. So you may also came up with the similar frameworks like a uh, React Native Cordova in the past. So now like a uh, Flutter is kind of like a go-to framework for uh, developers to build cross-platform applications. And that is the reason like why we are here, right? Like uh, given the popularity of the Flutter, we also need to like uh, look for the other solutions, how we're gonna test it, make sure like uh, the, the quality of the product has been achieved, right? So that will be the agenda for the rest of this session. So having said that, okay. So now we know like what a Flutter is. So uh, even though like uh, Flutter is going to be there, uh, people are going to use it for building cross platform application. So as a QA professionals, like uh, we should know like what are the different strategies that is there in the market for automating or testing those things, right? So uh, like how there is an SDK for building Flutter applications, similar to which Flutter team also has certain set of SDKs for testing those applications, right? So we'll just like quickly uh, walk through like what all the different uh, like uh, stacks that is already there in the market and uh, where exactly it fits in. So a typical how like other software development works are like, right? So it starts with a unit testing. So unit testing, nothing but like you write some function and test the functions in isolation, right? Like passing some different inputs, like uh, making sure that uh, function returns the expected output based on the input, you do some mocks. So that is where the integrator unit test lies, right? Similarly, uh, like a uh, Flutter also has uh, uh, like libraries that facilitate this unit testing where you could like uh, test all your functionalities in isolation. And this is just like a pure function like, like testing, like white box testing. So you're not testing anything as a whole here. And next comes the widget testing. So what this widget is nothing but like a, uh, 
So every UI element that you're going to see in this uh, Flutter application is called as a widget. So they are kind of a tiny uh, pieces, which will be like a built on top of each other to constitute a page or a screen. So a button can be a widget, your input can be a widget, your scroll view can be a widget. So every individual components that you see in a screen is known as a widget. So as part of this widget testing, we will just make sure the component that is there in the UI is working as expected. So for example, we we'll, let's take a button. We will make sure like uh, whether the button look and feel is expected, the interactions in the button is expected. We will check for the different state of the button, look, like all the functional related to the widget. And it is specific to the component alone. We are not going to test anything in uh, business use case here. It's just like isolated to a single component. And next comes the integration testing. So what this integration testing is like, so uh, so now we have uh, done the functional testing on the unit testing part. All the functions has been tested. So next comes the widgets. So we took individual widgets and uh, tested all the combinations on how will the widgets gonna behave. So now we're gonna put all this together and uh, test it as a whole. So where like you will be either testing it as a individual screen, or you will be testing it as an entire application. So that is what this integration testing is. And uh, Flutter uh, recently introduced a new framework called uh, Flutter Integration Test. And that, that is what they are recommending all the developers. So even the developers from Google is using the uh, integration test framework. So, and it has been written in Dart, and like you will be like uh, like mounting the entire app and do some testing on top of it, and uh, that's all about it. So that's called integration testing. And next comes the end-to-end -end testing. So what this end-to-end -end testing is like, uh, so now you are not just going to test your uh, a specific screen or a specific application, right? Like you need to test an end-to-end flow. So when I say into end flow, like it may include like starting an application, performing some operation, and validating like uh, not just the entities from the application, right? You may validate something on the file system. You may have a dependency on a different application. So you maybe have a dependency on the like a uh, mobile platform itself, like turning off Wi-Fi, turning on, do some like operations on it, right? Like that is where the end to end uh, testing uh, uh, comes. And uh, this is what we're gonna talk for the majority of the session, right? Like uh, how we gonna facilitate this end to end testing with APM. So that is one going to be the next steps. Okay, so now we have discussed. So we know like what are the different automation strategies we have and uh, where it exactly fits in, right? Like, uh, so then what's the need of uh, Flutter integration driver? Why do we really need it? So just because like uh, we, we wanted to build, we can't build something, right? We need some core reasons. And some of the reasons like, uh, or some of the problems that Flutter integration driver gonna solve are like, uh, so currently, like all the the testing framework that uh, Flutter supports, right, is written in Dart. So there is a like a very like a, a hardcore dependency that like uh, everyone should know Dart language. So it might be easy for developers to easily onboard for someone from a QA space who wants to contribute to a Flutter uh, automation test, right? So the learning curve is huge here. So we first need to understand what Dart is, then understand since it is going to be totally white box, we also need to understand few elements of Flutter itself. And then contributing to test is kind of a time consuming task. And then next problem is like, so uh, those frameworks doesn't have support for automating native use. So uh, since like, uh, uh, like Flutter is built on Dart and uh, the frameworks is also built on Dart, right? So just in case if your application needs to have a functionality where it needs to interact with a native view or like a core, uh, like a native uh, elements, so these frameworks doesn't have that uh, ability, right? So whatever things that is built in the Flutter can be automated, out of which is not supported with these frameworks. So the third problem we are trying to solve here is like, so these uh, libraries again are like a white box and it is very tightly coupled with like the development code base. So it's very mandatory that these tests should reside in the place where our development code also resides, right? So this makes things hard when it comes to like integrating with CI CD pipeline, if you want to test on need basis, so then you need to load the entire uh, repo, run your tests, and it's kind of a very uh, tedious process, right? And uh, one other problem we are trying to solve is like a parallelization of the tests. So they don't have any like uh, out of the box support for parallelization. So you run a test, you pick a device, it will run out. But what if like you want to test the same things on like a matrix of devices with permutation and combination, right? So that is not uh, currently supported. And we need some like additional efforts in building and utility on top of it to enable shading and all. So these are some of the like a very um, like a high level problems that we are uh, trying to target. So to solve this, so we came up with this library called uh, APM Flutter Integration Driver. So we'll just like give you like a little overview, you know, like a, 
what's the idea behind and like how it has been built so what we did is like so uh, we just picked the, all the good things from this uh, flutter integration test framework right so all its capabilities of like identifying elements on flutter view doing some advanced interactions everything so which is only specific for flutter and we also picked all the good things from apm where it could interact with all the native views all like other uh, like advantages of it and we clubbed together and we came up with this driver called a flutter integration driver where now people can start using it to automate your flutter apps on top of which you could also interact with other part of the application as well it's not just isolated to your flutter app alone so if you want to like automate a, like an native view you can use it so it also supports all the locators that is supported by flutter integration test you can use it you can have like additional like uh, uh, gestures uh, which is not supported by the native apm drivers right so we have added support for it so we just like picked all the good things from different things stitched it together and we just like uh, shipping it as a one reusable entity which can be used to test the flutter applications and the good part is like so you can test like uh, it on a real device be it a uh, ios simulator android emulator so everything is supported so we are also like expanding the support with the cloud vendor so sauce labs has already adapted this so now if you want to run your tests on uh, cloud Sauce Labs can be uh, like a preferred and uh, they support flat integration driver there as well. So yeah, this is kind of like a little overview. And even before uh, uh, this Flutter integration driver uh, came into existence, right? So so there is one other driver that is already there in the APM community, which is called a Flutter APM Flutter driver. So uh, it is uh, like a community supported. It's not like a something like a sub, like a maintained by core APM team. So it is also like a community baked uh, driver. So we'd also like to give a quick comparison between like what an APM Flutter driver is and what this Flutter uh, integration driver uh, like uh, supports out of the box, right? Okay. So what a Flutter uh, integration driver is capable of? Let's quickly like uh, see a few points there. So it supports multiple languages. So that means uh, currently uh, APM is kind of like a client server architecture where you have a server component and clients resides in a different languages and anyone could prefer the language that they are comfortable on. So similarly for Flutter integration driver, like, like you could pick any client you're comfortable. So to start with, we started uh, like adding support for uh, WebDriver IO in JavaScript and uh, core uh, Java clients. So soon we will also like expand the support for Python and Ruby and other clients as well. So now like uh, it's up to you, which client you want to choose, you can use. There is no barrier on the programming language for writing the tests. So second, easy, look easy to adapt. So the learning curve is very less here, right? Like you don't have to learn anything new tech stack or something. If you are already comfortable with APM, and if you already have a framework that uses APM to automate the mobile apps, right? So all you have to do is like a, like a install the respective driver on the server part, and you could just like start writing the test the way how you write it for the other drivers. Like for example, how you write it for a UI Automator 2 or a XUI test driver, right? You should just follow the same syntax. There is nothing new to learn. Just apart from like, uh, you just need to learn on the what new locator types that the driver gonna support and any new mobile commands that it's gonna support, right? Which is not a big thing to learn. The third part is like, uh, like it supports some out of the box gestures. So today in APM world, like if you wanted to do some like operations like swipe or drag and drop, like uh, you need to like do some complex uh, like actions. But this Flutter driver has some inbuilt mobile commands where we kind of like streamline all these complex uh, operations into like a very reusable methods. So for example, if you want to do a drag and drop, right? All you have to do is like pass in the two elements from where it needs to be dragged and drop and like this driver will take care of it. So we'll just like uh, look all these things in uh, like a detail. So it also supports uh, mocking a camera, right? So the, this is kind of a valid use case in mobile world today, like where you wanted to do a, like a scanning a QR or you need to upload some mock images or you wanted to do some like image uh, detection and all right, your application. So test these type of use cases, like uh, mocking the camera is one of the things that we need to look for. And this Flutter integration driver has enable support for mocking the camera images, limited to Android for now, but we are also looking for possibilities to expand it to iOS as well. And as I said like earlier, like uh, it supports like automating native view. So it's not just like automating the native view, right? Like you don't have to switch context between views. So you can right, have a seamless test at any point of time, you can interact with a, a Flutter element. On a very next step, you could like use any native element and you can interact it without need to switch for a different use. So you will be having a seamless experience while writing the test, while debugging the test, and even during the execution, right? So that's how like uh, the Flutter integration driver has built. 
So having seen this, let's quickly uh, see a quick comparison between like uh, the Flutter uh, driver that currently exists in market and the Flutter integration driver that we gonna newly launch. So as we uh, like uh, discussed earlier, right? So like uh, the Flutter team like uh, will also build some SDKs for testing the Flutter apps. So initial days, uh, Flutter team came up with this framework called uh, Flutter driver test. So that is like a earlier version of their testing framework where all their uh, Flutter automation is uh, powered with. But like uh, as time progresses, there are like a lot of challenges for the teams to maintain it. And uh, like it's very hard for developers to even contribute on the writing test, right? So, so now the latest version of that Flutter test is called as like integration test. So that is what the Flutter integration driver has been adapted to. So for the current Flutter APM driver uses the older version of the testing framework. So which is also under a deprecation now. So soon like a Flutter teams are like kind of a, making some of their APIs to private. So we may or may not know when things start gonna break. So that is the first point. So second point is like this, uh, the existing Flutter automation driver is not uh, completely W3C compliant, right? So today, like uh, there is a, like a standard where if you're gonna build any web driver, let it be Chrome driver or Firefox driver or Android driver, look, there are like certain set of rules that we need to follow. So current driver like lacks some of those standards in terms of like how you gonna identify the Flutter elements, or how we going to execute certain commands, right? So that is something we need to look for. So the third point is like, so there is no way for us to like uh, chain the elements. So today in any web driver world, like you find an element, you can chain finding multiple elements on uh, like on top of the other elements, right? So we don't have support for it. So whereas in Flutter integration driver is fully W3C compliant, you can like uh, chain web elements as how you like do it for other uh, web driver libraries. So which is lacking in the current uh, Flutter driver. And uh, the last thing is like, so they don't have support for uh, like a parallelization. So if you want to run the test in parallel, right? Like it is not pretty straightforward with the current Flutter driver. But whereas in Flutter integration driver, like we have been like uh, keeping the test as an isolated way. So with certain capabilities, you can easily achieve the parallelization of the test. So yep, that's a quick comparison between like uh, what is there currently and what improvements that uh, we have uh, brought into the stack, right? Okay, so now we have just like uh, looked into the, all the background and everything of uh, the uh, current uh, state. Okay, if someone wants to like use Flutter automation and like integration driver for the automation, right? What are all the steps that need to follow? So it's very pretty simple, right? So like how you gonna automate any other typical mobile application in uh, a UI automator to or execute, right? you should also follow the similar steps. So nothing fancy there. So there is one additional thing that we need to take care of. So this particular driver needs your application to be built in a certain way, which is also very simple, which is also like a documented in the, like a, the repository itself. Anyone could easily follow it. So once that is done, so rest all things remains the same. You just install the APM server, install the driver, you create an automation test, just connect your device and run it. That's it, nothing fancy, similar typical, you have a workflow that you follow for other mobile automation. You can easily like a plug and play into any CACD pipelines. So that's it. Okay, so I guess like we have talked a lot on all the things uh, what this uh, driver could do, right? So a demo could speak a thousand words than uh, like I'm explaining things, right? So let's just quickly like dive into a quick demo and just like explore like uh, what capabilities that uh, this driver could offer. So for this demo, right, like uh, I have a Flutter uh, application ready. So this is a Flutter app, if you go into it. So this is the Flutter code I was talking about, right, the Dart. And it has like multiple screens. And this is the Flutter application that I have already installed to my uh, device here. So it has like all different components, you can scroll different elements to it. So, yep, all components here. So now the, we said the first step, right? We need to prepare this application for automating it. So let's quickly see like what steps we need to follow. Okay, and so this is the repository where the driver code resides. You, you may like uh, check it later to understand how it's been done, okay. So it's very simple. So now I have a Flutter, uh, like a Flutter application code exists, right? So the very first thing is to like, I need to add some dependencies to it. So let's quickly go to it. 
and I will open this PubSec and under the dependencies, I have already added it. So this is a, one of the dependencies that your uh, application should have. And it is not like a production dependency, just a dev dependency. It will be only used for the testing purpose. Okay, so, and also this is a, all the changes is going to be one-time activity. So it's not like for every builds you need to do it. So just like configure it once and you just need to build the APK on need basis and you can just start running it. So we have added the dependency. So then we need to create a folder for integration test and we need to like create a file with this content. So let's go, I have a folder called integration test and I have created a, a file for APM and I just like copy pasted this code from here. So here, one thing which we need to make sure is like for this initialist test method, you need to like pass in the whatever the app object your application is going to be. In my case, my application object is coming from this lib main dot dot, and this is going to be my class. This may vary for your case. So based on how your application has been constructed, you need to create an object for your application class and you need to pass it to this initialist test. That's it. This is like going to be one time change. So once that is done, so we have a command to build an uh, a APK or a IPA or a, like a simulator build out of it. So now I'm going to run this command here. So I already copied it. So what this basically doing is like we are using the gradle build and we are like uh, passing in to use this particular integration test as part of the build. Okay, so now you will see a folder called build. Under build, you go app, outputs, apk. So you will get a file called this app debug.apk. Now let's quickly uh, try to install it and see. Okay, okay, I guess we have already installed the same version. So, okay, so once this app is installed and if you launch the app, right, you will see certain logs coming up from this app. So let's quickly see that. Okay, so as you could see, uh, okay, maybe we will kill and uh, relaunch it again. Okay, so you could see, right? Like uh, there is something called like a dot VM is like uh, gonna listen on something. So uh, this is where like you could see like, okay, your uh, application has been like uh, launched. Okay, it has been uh, built perfectly. So now, yeah, that's all step should be simple. So now the application has been built. So now let's go and install the server and the uh, driver components. So that should be again a straightforward process where uh, I have an APM already uh, installed. Okay. And uh, I will also make sure like uh, my Flutter integration driver is being installed. So, okay. So my, my driver is already installed here, but you could use this command. So it's just like, a, yeah. So Flutter inter driver, and you just like uh, pass in the name and the source, and it will just uh, install the driver for you. And uh, rest all simple, like you just like start your APM server. So here I'm just like uh, starting the APM server with some basic arguments, nothing fancy here. I will just like uh, start it. So now I have also written some tests. We will just like, go through the test in detail, but we will just like now see how we want to run this test, right? So I have a very simple WebDriver IO project uh, configured. So I have a capability here for iOS. So all we are going to do is like, uh, I'm just like telling, uh, use the automation name of uh, Flutter integration. So that means like you need to use Flutter integration driver for this automation. And I have, like I said, this uh, app path in the config itself. So if you took it this package, so I have already mm -hmm. built a pre-built application for iOS and it is there here for both Android and iOS, I'm putting it here. So I'm just like adding the same application. And uh, yep. Yeah. So, rest all remains the same, right? 
So like uh, what basic options you would uh, pass in for any automation and uh, that is what here it is. So now let's run a quick test and see how it looks. So, so we should also like uh, note like how fast the execution is like. So typically for any uh, like Android automation or iOS automation to with native drivers, right? So it, it will be very slow and like you need to like wait for a long time for the results to happen, right? The, the good thing about this integration driver is like the execution will be really fast. So that as you can see. So just like, a, like going through different schemes and performing some like a random testings. So look how fast these callings are happening here. So some long process is happening now. So yeah, like I have like some bunch of tests. So maybe we could just like stop the execution and like go through the test and see like what are the things and how we have written the test, right? So now even before writing the test, like uh, how are we gonna like inspect the elements, right? So this Flutter integration driver has a capability where uh, there are like additional locators uh, that has been given apart from the native ones that is already there in the uh, APM. So to like uh, locate those elements, so you just go into the application code base and you just type uh, flutter run. So this basically is showing like what all the different uh, devices that are connected to. I'm just gonna pick my Android device. So what it basically does is like, so just like a, we'll say binary in the debug mode, installs the binary to uh, the device and it starts uh, like a dev tools URL. So if you could see here, so it just like uh, uses a dev tools URL and we will open the Chrome. Okay. So now from here, it shows the complete application tree of my application. Similarly, how like a, a APM inspector or a Chrome DevTools work, right? So here, okay, let's say if I wanted to like uh, find the locator for this uh, login, I go to this text field and this text field will have certain properties. And there are like a uh, certain guidelines on how what locators has been supported, which is already documented. So one such locator that we're gonna focus today is called like a semantics label here. So there is like a element called semantics and then semantics will have a property called label. So which is going to be user text field. So in terms of uh, like a, a, like a, when we compare it with web, right? So the semantics is nothing but like ID equivalent of a flutter. So I could use this variable and like uh, we could use that locator or something like this, either by uh, browser dot of flutter by value key, or you could use like something called a uh, by semantics label. So these are like some of the like uh, locators that has been like supported by the uh, Flutter integration test. And you could do similarly, we have something called a text. So this is the text that is gonna be displayed on the UI, right? So let's say there's a button and that button has a text called okay. You could just like use this locator called a Flutter by text and that will easily find that element for you. So this is on the like element part. Like uh, similarly, we have like a uh, five, six uh, locators that is supported for Flutter. So you can just like uh, take a look at on the, the Git repo itself. So apart from these locators, right? Like there are some like uh, additional set of uh, advanced caches that uh, this Flutter driver gonna support. So for example, like uh, after performing login, right? 
so you need to like uh, do a scroll until a certain element to visible on the screen right in case of apm like you will find the height you will scroll you will make sure that element is displayed or not so that's kind of a tedious operation which is done on the client side but with this flutter driver so all you have to do is like uh, just one command so you just tell like uh, hey scroll till visible and you just like pass in the locator of like what element you wanted to like uh, wait for right so this particular command will scroll for you will wait for this particular element to be there and will exit so there are like additional capability of like you can pass like a which direction to scroll what should be the wait time between each scroll so these things will come handy when you want to test the infinite list so where you need to scroll to multiple pages of the list and to wait until a certain result to appear right so you could use this so similar to scroll we have like a methods for a double click so you just like uh, find an element and uh, ask you ask the driver to perform a double click on it again it supports parameters like like uh, what should be the wait time between the clicks so some something of that sort or you could even pass an offset so by default if you pass an element a double click will be triggered at the center of the element but what if like you want to do like a like delicate and uh, uh, event with with a certain coordinates not just a center right you have the capability of it similar to double click we have something called a long press so you you find an element you pass it and it will just perform the long press along with like you could uh, control like what should be the press time out or offset you could uh, do it and we also have something called a drag and drop so you find uh, the element that needs to be dragged you find the element that needs to be dropped so just call this function and it will just perform that operation for you right so it's like more of a very streamlined way of how you going to write your test you don't have to bother much on these logics in the client side rather than just purely focus on the business logics so and also like uh, you could like uh, if you see here so you could like uh, switch between like a flutter context to uh, like any native context without even like uh, providing uh, like a command there so here like we are performing some operation on a flutter element and right after that like we, this is kind of a native uh, uh, like a locator right xpath which is not supported by the flutter driver but this flutter driver is smart enough to identify like what is the type of this locator if this is supported by flutter driver it will take care of it if not it will just delegate those operations to the underlying native driver so for in case of android it uses ui automator as a native driver for ios it uses xuit driver so in your test it will be very clean you don't have to keep on like a switching between multiple contexts to achieve a, like a streamlined way of automation right so this flutter driver will kind of uh, takes everything on behalf of you so yep so i guess like uh, that's all pretty much like uh, i had this for this session so maybe like a will open for q and a and i will happy to answer any questions that uh, you have okay thank you sudarshan so that leaves us about uh, 10 minutes for q and a and there are cool. uh, yeah there are a good number of uh, questions here okay so the very first question is like using flutter app but automation not using so anyone who automated flutter for publication of selling i would like to connect a fee okay so there was one question like asked by upendra like how to inspect flutter ui elements is it same as api inspector for native use so like yeah there are like two ways so uh, if you can still use a uh, apm inspector to uh, still inspect the uh, flutter applications but uh, what happens is like so there are like certain things which are native to flutter once compiled will not be uh, shown in the uh, like uh, the apm inspector so that's why i show you that uh, uh, flutter inspector right where you build an application install it open the flutter inspector where you could see all the properties of the flutter so you could use make use of any property and uh, like uh, that supports flutter automation and you can just like uh, start using it so does it work with apm client java also yes so recently we dropped the support for uh, native uh, like a java client so you could just use the recent version of uh, apm java client and you could uh, start writing your automation with uh, flutter integration driver so will it be able to work for web view pages integrated with native app yep yep so even like if your application has a web view or a native view and like kind of a hybrid this flutter integration driver will still work for you so like as i mentioned before right so it's kind of like a hybrid where uh, like a, all the flutter view related operations will be taken care by the flutter driver and all native and web view operations will be taken care by the underlying native android driver or ios driver so it is totally possible is it mandatory to run the flutter server so you don't have to run any flutter server 
So you just need to build the application in the way how I demonstrated, right? Like adding the dependencies, building the executable out of it. So that is the only thing you need to do. So rest of the operations, apart from that point, is taken care by the driver itself. You just need to give the path of your application, and the driver will kind of start it and finds the server where it has been executing, and it will continue the automation from there. So okay. So the next question is like, do we have any documentation to use for Java client? Yes. So like, uh, if you go and look into the Java client, uh, like uh, the repository itself, right? You will able to find the uh, like uh, the complete examples over there, and also like you could find the like uh, the similar commands and other locators that has been supported in the APM. Uh, so the Flutter integration GitHub repo itself. So you could like uh, check it there. So there is one other question from Priya. Like, uh, can APM Flutter integration work with Python on Source Lab? So like, uh, e even now, like, uh, the Python is like, uh, it's automatable. But we are working on a dedicated uh, set of client changes to like APM Python itself to support all these operations uh, out of the box. So soon you will like, uh, like, uh, get to know about the support and you should be able to start using it. So do we have a Git repo of this project uh, with steps that would be helpful? Yep. So all the steps that I have explained, right? Like everything is documented as part of uh, this repo. Maybe I will just like uh, drop a link to it so you guys can refer. So I just like drop the link, so which has all the steps. So can we merge APM code and Flutter means native app and few screens with Flutter? Yep, that's totally possible again. So like, uh, what are the area? So you just need to use the uh, start using Flutter integration driver and you don't need to modify any existing code that you are uh, using. So maybe for the screens that uh, specifically uses the Flutter component, right? You may write some like wrappers in the page objects module, which uses the Flutter specific locator and Flutter specific operations. And you could just like seamlessly run through your tests. That is totally possible. Cool. I guess like uh, that's all the questions I can see so far. So I'm using APM Inspector for a few iOS elements. I can't be able to see how the Flutter Inspector helps. So this is uh, like a uh, this needs some more investigation, right? Like uh, there could be some underlying issue on the way how the app has been built, and there may be some other influential factors with, like uh, with this. Maybe you could give it a try with the Flutter Inspector and see like. Uh, if that could help, but Flutter Inspector will work only on the Flutter context. Any native view context will not be inspected uh, in the Flutter view. So maybe it's a worth give it a try and see like uh, if that helps. If not, feel free to like uh, create a issue in the Git itself, right? We will be like taking a look and help you get it resolved. Can we run automation tests without instrumenting, let's say, on production? apps yeah you could totally do it you know like kind of three you just need to build the app in the production mode and uh like uh we also like uh, captured these uh steps in that repo itself so you should be able to build and run the test but i guess there is a catch with the uh, ios uh, real device automation alone on production builds so they, this is kind of a, like ongoing issue with the flutter itself but apart from that like you should be able to like automate this switching context will work for Android slash iOS of the without specific Nick platform. Yep, yep. So like, uh, just in case you have a test and you want that test has both hybrid web and uh, like a native app, you right? You don't have to specify anything, irrespective of whether it is going to be iOS or Android or web. So you just like, uh, okay, for web, you need to switch a context, but for native and hybrid, you don't have to. So because like uh, the native is handled by both the Flutter and the APM driver itself, but in case of web, that underlying command needs to go to either Chrome driver or so. So for uh, for web context, we need to switch it, but between native and uh, Flutter, you don't have to switch any context. Is it mandatory to run source code for inspecting elements? Yep. So in case if you want to use a Flutter inspector, then you might need a source code for it. But in case of uh, uh, like uh, for uh, APM inspector, you don't need. So with the pre-built uh, application installed on the mobile, you should be able to inspect it. What is the snap max step we can use in Flutter Inspect? Uh, that is something which I don't have an answer straight away. Maybe like you could just like uh, cut open an issue and we will work on it and get it answered. 
we we thought specific but what challenges might arise when integrating flutter automation to ccd ccd pipelines using vpn and how can we overcome those challenges yeah so in case of ccd right like so apm doesn't have any out of the box uh, tools to support it so there is like one other plugin called device farm so which we kind of use it heavily for uh, parallelization and managing devices and running it in uh, like an isolated environment right this flutter integration driver has a support for the device farm too so maybe it's worth uh, giving it a try so i'm using apm inspector okay to answer is there any strategies also to provide a code repo okay for custom locator strategies yeah we have something related to on that in the pipeline where you could define your own custom strategies while building your application and you use the same in the test code so that is something in the backlog but uh, you can like watch out on the git for any updates on uh, these things yeah i guess like uh, we answered uh, most of it uh, shikant Yeah. So I will take it up anything afterwards in the yeah, yeah. Like, uh, at, at the hangout session we can do that. Sure. Yeah, it's awesome, and we finished on time too. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Shankar. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Yeah.